Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone can hear me? Great, welcome to developing a data quality process. My name is Mark Esdale, I'm Vice President of Business Development for CRM Fusion Incorporated. We're a uh, software developer based outside of Toronto, Canada that since 2004 has been exclusively designing Salesforce data quality solutions for Salesforce customers. I'm really happy to be presenting here today at my 14th Dreamforce. Uh, just missed the very first one. Since our company inception, we've worked with more than 8,000 different Salesforce firms regarding their data quality. So today, in a very short 20 minutes, I'm going to try to give you a high-level review about how to build a data quality process, and maybe we'll be able to take a look at some data quality tools. Uh, we're going to go pretty fast, so let's get right at it. The agenda for today, we're going to talk about why data quality is important. We're going to talk about means and methods to assess CRM fusion or CRM uh, data quality. Then we're going to talk about the actual dealing with data quality, how to stop bad data from entering your Salesforce system before it gets there. We're going to talk about cleaning Salesforce data once it does get into your system, if it does slip through. We're going to talk about how to improve and protect data. And finally, we're going to talk about how to try to keep data clean automatically. I'm going to try to give you some ways to go home and get started right away. Well, let's start with this. What is bad data? Does anybody have a CRM data or a Salesforce database with no bad data in it? <laughs> Hands up, everybody. No duplicate, right? So what is, you know, what is bad data? Bad data is data that's, you know, let's start with non-standardized data. They, data that doesn't look the way we want it to look. It's wrongly formatted. There's the good old story of duplicate data. Everybody has duplicate data and we have to do something about it. Data can become old and stale. How do we identify that? What do we do about it? Data can be wrong. It can be incomplete. Data can be unused and redundant. And also, data can be owned outside of security permissions. So basically, data that's in the system that nobody can see. I call it ghost data. So I mean, that's a good definition of what bad data is. But why do we care? I mean, why is data quality so important? A lot of this stuff's pretty obvious, right? I mean, bad data quality turns into bad results. Inaccurate data, reports that nobody trusts, forecasts that are just wrong, dashboards that are pretty but don't really mean anything because the data underneath them is just irrelevant. It's time. People waste time. Looking at bad data, is it sales reps calling accounts that don't exist? Is it marketing people sending out stuff to people that, you know, you know, maybe sending five copies to the same person. Whatever it is, it's simply just a waste of time. As a Salesforce.com administrator, we care about user adoption, of course. Bad data is the number one killer of user adoption. This isn't a Salesforce thing, this is a CRM thing. It doesn't matter, I don't care how good your CRM system is. If it's filled with junk data, you are going to lose your user's attention. They're going to give up. It's just not going to be worth their time and effort to play inside of the boundaries of that CRM system. As a coder, bad data results in good code that doesn't work. Nothing wrong with the code, but the data doesn't work with the code we just wrote. And really all this boils down to is lost money. Bad data costs money. I got a good example of it. This is a real world customer example from one of our customers a couple years ago. They're a, a large marketing company that deals with uh, car dealerships. They send out a very expensive fulfillment package. It's about $20 for a fulfillment package that they send out. Well, they want to send out 4,000 packages. So it's going to cost them $80,000 to send these packages to 4,000 car dealerships. Well, before they got into data quality and cared about it, this was their result. They had 500 bad addresses. They just were gone. Those dealerships had gone out of business or they had moved. Those 500 bad addresses cost that campaign $10,000. They had 1,000 duplicates, so they sent $20 packages more than once to you know, over 1,000 people, costing them another $20,000. They sent 100 pieces just to the wrong people. Those people didn't even exist anymore, and those went to waste too. 
So overall, on an $80,000 campaign, $32,000 worth of marketing effort just went down the tube. And this is not unusual. We always see 25, 30, 35 percent return numbers on this kind of stuff. What a waste. Let's talk about how to assess CRM data quality. It's tough. You know, you first get into a database, maybe you, you join a new company and you look at the data. How do you really kind of assess how good this data is? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. The first thing we have to start with is defining an ideal. That's that whole thing, you know, you can't get to somewhere where you don't know where it is. So the process of identifying what ideal data looks like is key to this entire process. You know, what data on what records is important, is nice to have? What data is kind of important to have? And what data is absolutely mission critical? We have to document this. If the users aren't told what's important, how can we expect them to focus their efforts appropriately to try to meet this undocumented ideal? And everything we do as an administrator regarding data quality constantly has to be measured against this ideal. Again, if we don't know where we're going, how are we ever going to get there? There's lots of ways to assess the quality in the system itself. Uh, Salesforce reports and dashboards. Let's design reports specifically to report on data quality exceptions. You know, those reports that say, hey, this is the ideal, and this report shows us what isn't ideal. And it gives us something to work on. It gives us a target zone, of course. You know, let's do reports. You know, we're so used to reporting on data, but how about reports on blank data? Or data that's, you know, small and we know that it's not correct. We can use a variety of deduplication tools, like the one our company makes, to go out there and search for duplicates and figure out how many of those records are duplicates. We can use tools to calculate how much the fields are used in the database. There's some great app exchange free tools out there for measuring field utilization. You know, what percentage of your fields are actually used? What percentage are actually populated? But really it comes down to profi profiling and analyzing the data that's in that system and constantly measuring it against, again, that ideal. Here's a good example. Leveraging, uh, let's write a Salesforce formula. Here's an example of a Salesforce formula. This formula is designed to measure population of fields on a record, right? So basically, in that formula, we say that if the email and the phone and the company and the title and the industry are all populated, a record gets one point for every single one of those fields that's populated. Let me skip out of PowerPoint quick and go over into the Salesforce side, and we'll take a look at this in action. Um, here's a record for uh, uh, Mr. M. Mickey Mouse. Um, you can see up at the top, I've put a little five-star star system onto this record. That's representative of that formula. Those stars come out of that formula. So we know that this is a five-star record. If I was to go in and do something like get rid of this phone number and save this record back in, we can see how the data quality of that record automatically falls. And likewise, of course, when I put that data back, that's going to come back in. And even in things like list view, oops, sorry, uh, even in things like list view, it gives me the ability to quickly go in And right there, I can, you know, right there in list view, I can quickly scan a list of records and determine which are my best records against that ideal and which ones aren't the best records. And again, this is the kind of stuff we're bringing. This isn't, isn't in the back end. This isn't administrators. We're pushing this to the end user. Mr. User, why are you messing with a two-star record? Do something about it. That's the sort of message we're trying to get as administrators. Oops. Oops, sorry. Oops, oh, sorry. Meh. 
Okay, now let's start talking about stopping bad data from getting into the system. If you analyze Salesforce and you really think about it, there are really six different ways the data gets into Salesforce. End users enter data from the Salesforce graphical user interface, the standard browser version of Salesforce. Users enter data from mobile devices. People mass import data into the system. We have integrated and custom systems that put data in. Websites can feed Salesforce data. And then there's a variety of synchronization technologies that bring data into Salesforce. You know, your Outlook synchronizers and those kind of tools. So it's really those six areas we have to worry about the most. And I want to cover two areas. The first thing I want to cover is what I call stage one, mitigating the problem. What can we do easily? What can we do for free? What can we do from a best practice side to deal with that data? What can we do? And then in stage two, what kind of actual control strategies can we go? How can we literally control this? I mean, just force the control in that situation before this data actually gets into Salesforce. So let's go through some of these. Um, in stage one, mitigating end user entry. Creating data access rules. Who is allowed to enter data into the system? Who's allowed to add? I can't stress this enough, if in doubt, limit access. We have a lot of accounts that end users, a standard end user isn't allowed to be able to create an account. There's a control mechanism, there's a process. I would like to create this as a new account and they have to go to a process or a person to actually make sure that they're allowed to be able to do that. The use of mandatory fields, pick list, validation rules, etc., And of course, training those end users about not only what good, what good data is, what the ideal is, but how important data quality is. The mobile, cust or the mobile client creates a whole new issue for us. Mobile clients generally are not that customizable. We may not be able to get a mobile client to agree and to conform with our definition of ideal. So we may actually have to worry about letting that data in as it is and having some kind of a post process to deal with it, cleaning it after it gets into the database. Mass data imports, trade show lists, purchase lead lists, these kind of things. The number one thing I say about this is don't let everyone do it. If you let everybody go crazy in importing data, import their own Excel data, import their, uh, their telemagic data, whatever old data they got, you're just asking for it. It's to, uh, you know, we have to make sure that those people are qualified to enter mass data because the import wizard is just a giant weapon to create a massive mess in your database. Um, only, and of course, we got to make sure that the data that we import is, again, following that, following that data model, that it matches our ideal, or we better have a plan to solve it later. Integrated systems, these should be easy, right? Integrated custom systems, these are our own tools. There's no reason these systems can't be designed around the data quality ideal. Web to lead. This is great. I mean, we got to make sure, again, those web forms or websites are feeding the ideal records the way we want them into Salesforce. And the nice thing is, if you use Salesforce native web form, web delete stuff, it basically comes native because it follows your existing database strategy. So this is some um, easy things we can do regarding, uh, wow, uh, easy things we can do regarding uh, mitigating the problem. Oh, the syncing ones, of course, they're the hardest of them all. But there's probably nothing we can do. We probably have to worry about them post-process. Let's talk about uh, controlling those actual kind of hard-coded methods we can do to control data. For the end user entry, we can buy tools that provide a real-time dedupe. Our company makes a product called Dupe Blocker. We can literally stop users from entering duplicates. We can pull a variety of triggers when a duplicate is found to deal with that issue right off the top. The mobile clients can be done with real-time dedupers as well. We can allow those mobile clients to feed data into Salesforce the way they want to, but then in the background, we have these processes running that are looking for these duplicates and either blocking or autom automatically merging them as they come in. 
mass data imports. Our product sells, our company sells a product called People Import. It's a tool that is a lot stronger than the import wizard because we're going to import and dedupe at the same time, right? We don't going to want to bring these dupes in, so we're going to do it in a in one uh, in, in sorry one simple process. Integrated systems can have real time dedupers, and of course we can code directly against the real time dedupper APIs. And Web to lead, one of the largest ones. This is another one that really needs a mandatory dedupe. Give you an example. If you go to my website, the very first time you fill out a form, you create a lead in Salesforce. If you go to that form every day for the next two weeks and fill it out again, all you're doing is updating that exact same lead with more and more data. We're not creating the dupes. We're just grabbing that as a dupe and appending that information to existing records. I'm going to. Uh, Let's go and take a quick look at a real-time deduper as my time is, wow, going fast. Uh, in a real-time deduper, I'm going to pull up this Mickey Mouse record again, and I'm going to hit the clone button. So this is an existing record into the system. I'm going to hit the clone button, really trying to represent, hey, whoops, sorry, as he says, hit the clone, there we go, uh, hit the clone button. Uh, representing an end user who is typing this new lead into the system. Probably should have searched to see if Mr. Mouse already existed, but they didn't. So they type this information brand new, and they hit the save button. This is where a real-time deduper jumps out and tells the user with that big red error message, Mr. User, this is a dupe. Do not, you're not allowed to enter this. There's the record right there, and there's the hyperlink to that existing Mickey Mouse record that you should have going in and found by yourself, okay? I don't know why my, I'm having trouble with that. A quick review. Okay, now we've kind of handled that data input side. What do we do about bad information that's already in the database? What do we do about bad information that somehow slipped through our incoming nets? What we do is we use external data quality tools to access the database and run a variety of admin data quality tasks. We can run tasks for doing ETL, extraction, transforming, or transformation and data loading, uh, maintenance jobs and backup jobs. We can run external processes to standardize data. Let an external program go in and say, hey, find all the data that looks like this that's bad and change it so it all looks like this. Hit a button and change a million records automatically so it conforms to the way we want it. We can allow external systems to run dedupe processes, where in a dedupe process, we're going to have this external system access the Salesforce data live, look for duplicates, and then merge those duplicates at the data center. And finally, we can handle lead processing, the uh, analyzation of the lead object, dealing with leads that are probably other objects already in the database, the lead who is already a contact, or the lead that should be a new contact inside of an existing account. All of this kind of stuff is possible. Going forward, what we're going to try to do then is when we use these external tools, like our product called Demand Tools, we develop data quality jobs. We run these jobs and clean the data. But then we save these jobs. We save these jobs for automatic scheduled operation. As an administrator in my production org, I know that every night 60 or 70 data quality jobs happen. I know that there is never a duplicate that looks like this. I know that the state is never in its long format. I know the country is never in its short format because it's not my ideal. And these data quality processes that happen automatically uh, take care of all of this for me. And it changes my life as an administrator. It allows me to only look for bad data and wonder, how did it slip through my net? How did it get into the system in the first place? And when it got in there, how did it not get dealt with? And it really does change it because I end up with a self-cleaning database. And going forward, it's the ideal situation. So we're really, as a situation uh, review here, we get our input controls 
and our database cleansing working together under the same ideal record definition. Our data stewards are doing nothing now but looking for bad data, figuring out how it evaded our systems. And when we find that, we're going to develop new jobs or tweak the existing jobs so that they automatically go in and fill the hole. How can you get started when you go home, as I'm 19 seconds in here? Uh, you can go home and get right at some of those data quality tools on the App Exchange. Go in there and get some of those formulas designed. Get in there and define your ideal record and communicate that to your end user base. Survey your end users. Score your records. Are we all working on that same definition of ideal? Review available data quality tools and go and actually develop yourself a data quality project plan. As I finish dead on time here, uh, I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, we are located over there by the Twilight Campfire at Booth 28. We're also located in Mus on the uh, Moscone Expo at uh, Booth 218, they tell me. Uh, and I'll be out available after the event if there's any questions. I want to thank you for your attention. Enjoy your day and enjoy your show, folks.